Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I hope you're having a fantastic Saturday. So we have some XRP news today. We have some bank news today. Bad news as usual <laughs> with the banks. I mean, this one's going to really blow your mind. We were just talking about deposit flight the other day. <laughs> the other day. <laughs> They're in trouble. I'm sorry. <laughs> Gotta laugh. It's like every single day. It's been getting worse and wor worse. <laughs> And all our information is getting put there, put out there at the forefront, which is quite unusual. So if you've seen the videos, right, where it says like warning, those those articles literally, <laughs> literally are titled warning. I'm just taking a piece from their title. Right. And it's been devastating news every single time. I don't know what I'm going to title this video, but I had to have a little bit of a laugh because when you see this article, it's so mind blowing. There's no way people don't think the banks are in trouble after this one. But anyway, <laughs> we have some Solana news and we also have um, some Bitcoin news. We'll end it off today with Bitcoin news. This won't be a very long video today. All right. So now <laughs> this article is titled Ripple CEO explains what would be great for XRP. We're going to skip down to this section titled Dominating Crypto Infrastructure Will Be Great for XRP. It says building on the premise the Fox journalists inquired about Ripple's anticipated growth trajectory in light of clearer regulation, particularly as the company plans to introduce a USD backed stablecoin. Well, you know, with the stablecoin to me, it's just really them showing they're planting their flag in the United States. We're not going anywhere. We want to continue to do business here. They need something to do here right now while everything is kind of on pause in the United States. They already built the infrastructures. They already shaking hands with a lot of different U.S. banks. So they need something to do here. But that's really what that means to me. The whole stablecoin thing. It's a show of a, 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 a fight that they're going to stay here. They're going to continue to be active in the United States. When you have regulatory clarity, why wouldn't they dominate? They have great relationships with uh, Bank of America, Santander, a lot of different banks. So why wouldn't they be able to dominate? Not only that, but based on the information we've been reading from this week, those banking systems and those tiny little siloed weak systems that they're making, you know, uh, their own little weak blockchains, no disrespect, it's just my opinion, um, they're so far behind us. It's unbelievable. So, you know, having a company like Ripple come in will be no different than, let's say, how Chainlink steps in and Swift is just drooling from the mouth to use Chainlink. These banks will be drooling at the mouth to use XRPL based systems, XRP based systems, in my humble opinion, my humble opinion, not financial advice. Um, and that's something that would be impactful to the price in the future. If, they, if we could pull that off, we can get past this hurdle, this battle with the SEC. But let's continue on here. It says Garling House pointed out that over 95% of his customers are financial institutions outside the U.S. Well, that will change once we have clarity. Keep that in mind. The reason why that is is because we've been able to build outside of the U.S. And we haven't yet been able to build like we want to inside the U.S. We will unleash on them. And they know that. They know that. You know, all of that holding us back was really to buy them time. As you, I mean, just look at what's actually happening. Look at what's actually there. They bought themselves time. And while they say, they were saying, no, 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 crypto bad, blockchain bad, they've been building with blockchain all along, right? It's just that they're so far behind us, they just can't catch us. And hopefully we continue to innovate and stay ahead of them. Um, but that's really what it was all about, you know. And now we just have to put the, um, the finishing touches on this victory here. Um, hopefully in some time in the next few months, who knows, who knows how long it's going to be. You can never predict these types of things. And then we could just, you know, we just run the table. It says here, so 95% of his customers are financial institutions outside the U.S. He noted that Ripple provides payment and custody solutions to these institutions. Moreover, the CEO revealed that Ripple seeks to continue expanding, even though the U.S. market remains slow with adoption. Furthermore, Garlinghouse expressed that the opportunity to be an infrastructure provider for the crypto market is massive, noting its positive implications for Ripple and XRP, the digital asset it leverages for payment solutions. Here's a quote. It says, quote, the opportunity is huge. We think that is that that is going to be great for Ripple. We think it's going to be great for XRP, the digital asset we use. Keep that in mind. Listen to what he said, because there's so many people. I don't know. Their thoughts are wayward when it comes to Ripple and its connection to XRP. 
He said, that's the digital asset we, Ripple, uses. That man has a tattoo of XRP on his arm. Sort of like how Tupac had Thug Life tattooed on his belly. That means it, it holds some type of sentimental value. He takes XRP seriously. Seriously enough to put it on his body is what I'm saying. Right? Never forget that. And I respect that. It says, so I'm very optimistic, unquote, Garling House remarked. All right, let's move on here to this next article. So now this one here, I'm waiting. I'm, I'm trying to figure out why they would title it this. But this article was titled shock leak from China said to propel XRP price. Um, this is coming from Forbes. This is come from, uh, I believe this is Billy Bambro. Let me scroll up and just make sure it's from Billy Br Bambro, senior contributor at Forbes. All right. He suggests that a sudden revelation from the Chinese market could be on the verge of propelling XRP price. But, you know, just skimming over the article, pretty much the gist of it is, um, you know how they just announced their Bitcoin and their Ethereum ETFs. Um, there's a little bit of a discrepancy there because I've read a lot of articles that said that that kicked off like a few days ago. But now they're saying that this certain information was deleted from the Internet. So now there's a little bit of confusion there. Hopefully we get a little bit of clarity on that. But there is obviously this, um, I wouldn't even say this battle brewing. Really, the West and the East are always competing. There, there's just, there's competition everywhere. So, you know, um, the West has their Bitcoin ETFs and then Hong Kong is coming through now. And then they're saying, hey, you know what? We're going to do Ethereum ETFs as well. So obviously they're trying to get their, <laughs> they're, trying to, <laughs> they're trying to get their Ethereum ETFs out <laughs> before the West. <laughs> So which makes sense to me because they want some of that money. You know, the West got in on the Bitcoin ETFs first and they got in very low, very low price. And they ate up a lot of those profits. You know, they, they absorbed a lot of those profits. They benefited. Um, and a lot of other places may, may not have been able to do such. <laughs> so they're like, OK, you what? that's how you want to play. We're going to <laughs> try to get these Ethereum ETFs out. And then you're you're going to be on the uh, the losing end because we'll be in early. That's how they I think that's how they're looking at it. But anyway, so then obviously XRP plays uh, a part of it, and that's where he gets you know the point he gets to at the end of this article here is about if the big the, the competition between the West and the East with Bitcoin and Ethereum will will funnel a lot of money into those two, and obviously that trickles down to everything else. XRP is the next in line after. Bitcoin and Ethereum, you know, I think a lot of people can agree on that. That's the, that's the big three, Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP right now. And um, and so XRP will benefit greatly from this activity. But I, I, I'm going to say this. I thought he was going to go a different direction with this article and say that maybe Hong Kong might be the first to issue an XRP ETF. I thought that's what it would be about. You know, um, I don't even need a shock. There was no shock announcement in my humble opinion. They've been just doing a lot of these um information releases but like i said they get buried a lot of important information those articles come out but they never see the light of day unless a researcher comes by and says hey we found something but other than that and, and even then it doesn't go as far as it would if the mainstream or if bigger you know uh uh, entities picked it up and said, hey, this is what's going on. So it just gets buried a lot of times. But that's what that's pretty much what he was saying it says quote quote it is now a fight for capital between Hong Kong and New York to flow into their Bitcoin ETFs, all right? And obviously, like I say, he also speaks about the Ethereum, the possibility of the Ethereum ETFs, which, uh, you know, information out of Hong Kong was uh, was uh, hinting towards. So, you know, we'll get a little bit of clarification on that, but big times lay ahead is what that means. For Bitcoin, Ethereum, um, XRP, Solana, all of those top legit projects are looking really, really good, in my humble opinion, in the long term. You know, we're going to get this. We're going to get this volatility. That's we always we've always known that um, that's going to happen. People are going to take profit. It's going to go up, go down. We just had the Bitcoin halving just occur. So now the clock is ticking. And I, can't, I I'm telling you, I'm so excited. I can't wait because I remember 2020. Right. And what happened there at the tail end of 2020? And then what happened in 2021 was it made such an impact on me. I could never forget. And so now the clock is ticking. If all the experts are right, we're looking at another explosion at some point within the next six months to a year. Another explosion from Bitcoin. Now, don't get me wrong. There's going to be 
little uh, lifts in Bitcoin. Now, I say little, but they're going to be significant, but they're nothing like what the major one is going to be. Now, I can't say what the major one is going to be. I'm not a psychic. I'm not Miss Cleo. I'm always going to reference Miss Cleo. That's the psychic that I know. You know? And every time I think about Miss Cleo, I get good memories. <laughs> Call me now for a free redone. Remember that? Do you remember that? Stop, stop playing around. Somebody, one of you called. One of you called Miss Cleo for a free reading. <laughs> oh, man. What? That was, oh, man. My apologies, folks. When I think about the old school, it's just so fun, man. The, the fun movies, the fun sports, man. You know, people just riding bikes everywhere, uh, in line skating. It was alive outside. You know, these, the youth today have this term of being outside. It's different. Obviously, they use that differently, but man, it was fun to be outside in the world, you know, everywhere, anywhere. It could be anywhere. You might go by your friend's house to playing video games or something. Maybe they're on the porch playing cards. You go to the, the park and people are just it's a soccer game. You didn't have to pay money. They just, they just have these teams. I don't even know where these teams came from. And you just have this te these teams playing soccer and there's, there's families everywhere and there's food cooking and you know, uh, you didn't you didn't even have to know people. It's just like you want a plate of food. They just load up this plate of food. You got hamburgers and hot dogs. And I mean, it could be a block party. They don't even do they have block parties anymore because I don't see them. Right. They have a block party. Some of you might not even know what a block party is. It's just somebody on the block just pulls out their their music. They pull out their um their barbecue grill and they just start cooking. People just start dancing. People pull up chairs. You know, little kids running around doing whatever little kids do. And, oh, they get to cooking. Oh, and the food is glorious. All types of honey barbecue chickens and hamburgers. And, oh, when the, when the hot dogs get all burned up and they all black. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and you look and you're like, I don't know about that. But when you eat it, you're like, oh, this is good. This is the best stuff. Somebody brought out the lasagna. Yeah, they brought out the lasagna. Like, wait a minute. There's hot dogs. There's there's. Burgers, there's chicken. Where, where does lasagna fit in here? I don't even care. I just start eating it. Oh, yeah. Give me some of that lasagna. Yeah. And, and let me get some of that. Um, What's that? What's that? Uh, uh, Let me get some of that potato salad and that pot. I'm eating everything. Yeah. And then I'm playing basketball afterward. We're going to burn those calories. I was playing basketball earlier today. Yeah, that's right. I was. It was a good, good Saturday. I worked a little bit in the morning. Then I took a break and I, I, you know, I shot some hoops with my people. And then, well, now I'm here. <laughs> now I'm here. <laughs> well, this is a crypto channel, right? <laughs> All right. Anyway, let's move on to some more articles, people. I'm supposed to keep this video a little shorter. We're still doing, we're still making good time, but I hope y'all having a good time out there, man. Shout out to Lynn. Uh, shout out to Laser Current. Shout out to Matthew, Corey, man. Like I can't name everybody. Marky Mark. Man, listen, everybody that's a subscriber, everybody that's in the members only section. Shout out to Crypto Schizo. Um, listen, I love you all. Thank you. Let's move on to this article right here. I just want to show some love to the people. All right. So now this article here. Wow. This is the banking information. Get ready for this. Wait, wait. Let me scroll down. Let me scroll down. It says deposits at Wells Fargo. Get ready for this. Deposits. I told you there was massive deposit flight at Wells Fargo dropped fifteen point one billion dollars over the same time frame from one point three five trillion in Q1 2023 to one point three four trillion in Q1 2024. Fifteen billion dollars. That's what I'm talking about. Where did it go? So let's let's just suss some things out. One, some of it could have gone to gold. Gold price is extremely high. It's very protective. And they definitely probably saw, I would say, if they got in a little bit low, because gold went absolutely insane this year, um, they probably have some sitting on some good gains, and that definitely is helping them to fight against inflation and protect their capital, their value. That's one. Money market, don't forget, money market funds, you have that, right? Some probably went to money market funds. Um, cash on the side, CD accounts for that yield. What are CD? What are CDs at right now? I put up numbers. That was about about two months ago when I put those numbers up. I got to check again. Um, but CD accounts. So 
Some people probably put their money into CDs, um, other various crypto things. So, so a lot of that has moved elsewhere and people are going to keep it there. Then on top of that, I read some articles about people keeping cash in their homes. I do not recommend that. Very, very risky. And if you do that, don't you tell a soul that you're doing that. Don't you tell anyone, hey, I got an idea, bro. Hey, I got an idea. And you're talking to these people at your job or something. No, don't do that. Don't get yourself in it. I mean, I can't tell you what to do. It's not advice, but don't put your safety in jeopardy. People will do crazy stuff over money. But I did read articles about people keeping cash at home, right? Large amounts of cash at home. Um, so now it says here, JP Morgan Chase says deposits tumbled 7%. In its consumer and community banking division in Q1, excluding numbers from the firm's majority acquisition of troubled First Republic Bank across the entire firm. JP Morgan says deposits were flat, excluding First Republic. Moving forward, JP Morgan Chief Financial Officer Jeremy Barnum says America's biggest bank expects deposits, uh, deposit balances to remain flat at best as customers look for more yield. On their cash. That's what I'm talking about. They're going everywhere but the banks. It says, quote, we expect deposit balances to be sort of flat to be to modestly down. So that's a little bit of a headwind at the margin in a in a world where we have we've got something like nine hundred billion dollars of deposits paying effectively zero relatively small changes in product level reprice can change the NII run rate by a lot. So big problems happening at the banks here. So the, uh, the article title was $38 billion in deposit flight hits Wells Fargo and Citigroup in one year. I'll tell you what, they're focusing on them. Just imagine all that other deposit flight from other banks added to this. $38 billion. Whoa, Nelly. Banking system, you are in trouble. So now let's uh, move on here to this article. This article is titled... Solana hasn't nearly hit its scalability ceiling. And that means dot, dot, dot. Some people hate that ellipsis. They hate the dot, dot, dot. But understand, <laughs> I don't know why. When um when I was younger, they taught us to use that in school, you know, and I was in uh, AP English, honors English, you know, a lot of different things, creative writing. And they taught us to use that ellipsis dot, 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 you know. Um, it's a good thing to use, especially if you want to keep suspense, you know. It, anyway, so now this article begins as such with Bitcoin's halving now done and dusted. The market seems to be on edge of recovery at the time of writing Bitcoin, along with other altcoins, along with altcoins. What says with other altcoins? Uh, maybe it's a typo. We're predominantly in green and Solana notably surging by 6% in just 24 hours. Contrary to Seoul's bullish uh, price trajectory, however, of late, there has been a disproportionate amount of failed transactions. Oh, man, why you got to throw that negativity in there? Why? Just tell me the positive news. I guess you could say he's trying to keep a balance, I suppose. I'd rather just hear the positive. It's just my, that's just my thing. Says network issues galore. My goodness. Let's skip that part. All right. <laughs> it says, what is the data indicating? Mocking the chart presented by Block Boxworks. Smith said, quote, the chart does not capture drop transactions. Oh, man, they're, they're going deep with that. No, it's not. Listen, Solana. Here's the thing about Solana. Solana is a money maker. It's a money maker, and people, as long as it functions well, it has the institution's um, attention. Institutions are not worried about that uh, because they themselves go through a lot of different problems. They just fix it and they move on. Um, the difference is they're able to keep it quiet, and so the people don't get that opportunity to complain. Like for example, they've had all these data breaches. Tons of people, banks, healthcare uh, providers, insurance providers. Their data has leaked tons of people's social security numbers floating around there in the dark web. Emails, phone numbers, names, addresses floating out there on the dark web, but they don't report it until two months later, until it's already too late. And even then, that information is buried. It's not covered by the mainstream, while crypto, although like crypto shoots itself in the foot so much, the same people that make money off of crypto 
um, big money off of crypto through these websites um, and have a vested interest to want crypto to succeed so they can continue to do this. They are the same ones that will put crypto's dirty laundry right out there out front. Just let them let them fix this and move on. It's a strong company, super bullish. They have super uh, uh, bullish partnerships. Um, they have all the support in the world. You have billionaires and millionaires talking about how uh, supportive they are of Solana. Let them fix it and move on just like any other company. But they will highlight this and rip it down. Um, that's one thing crypto has bad. It rips itself down. Their, their communities will cannibalize themselves. Um, the companies will battle each other. It's like work together until you get to the promised land. Walk together until you get to the promised land. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I just think differently. You know, listen, if we're a team, me and you may have problems. Nobody, them out there, those people out there don't need to know about that. But while we're a team, I'm going to work with you. I'm going to put everything to the side, put my ego to the side until we get the victory. And even when we do get the victory, then after that, we can just part ways. But the friction, the ripping down, it doesn't get us anywhere at all. Nowhere. So now, so it's pointless. And let me tell you something. I don't involve myself in pointless things. I don't. If it's not moving me forward, I don't involve myself. If it's not productive, I don't involve myself. If there's not a benefit, I won't typically involve myself unless I'm giving. And I only give to people I think that are worthy. And that would have to be someone very, very close to me or someone that really made an impression upon me. Then I just give. Time, assets, it doesn't make a difference. It doesn't make a difference. So now let's move on from there. I thought that our article was going to go in a completely <laughs> different direction. <laughs> now, watch Solana's price continue to skyrocket because people aren't. But listen, this is one thing I learned about crypto. Also, the majority of people in crypto, they just want to make money off of the stuff. They don't actually use the uh, the blockchains. They really don't like Bitcoin, for example. A lot of people aren't using Bitcoin was made to be currency, you know, capital. You go, you, you buy some Bitcoin, you go shopping with it and stuff like that. But people don't use Bitcoin like that. They don't go shopping. They don't spend their Bitcoin. They buy Bitcoin just to make money. You think they care if Bitcoin were to have some problems? They would not care. They still want to make money. It's the same. Just look at the mentalities of, of, of people when they buy meme coins. They don't care if meme coins or meme coins are useless. They just want to make money off of it. This is a money making era. So whatever Solana has going on, fix it. Fix it, but the bottom line for people that are money makers, Solana will continue to rise. It will continue to make money. It's just that simple. And I'm going to continue to make money off of it. As simple as that. All right. So now. <laughs> oh, man. Um, let's move on to this last article here. All right. <laughs> this article here is a Bitcoin article. And. Um, it is titled, After a Halving Event, Bitcoin Transaction Fees Soar to Over, what was it, $200, was it $240? Is that what it is? I'm waiting for this to load up. I don't know why this website is going haywire. It's trying to load up everything. It's loading up everything that it can. <laughs> they have video ads playing. They have the side ads playing. And it's just sometimes, it's just too much. They got a, uh, one tiny ad. Man, it says here. Upon reaching block height, 840,000, when the mining pool uh, via BTC collected 37,626 Bitcoin in fees worth $2.39 million, the expense for on-chain transfers climbed, surpassing $240 per transaction. Block 840,003 recorded 16.06 .06 Bitcoins in fee payments, and Block 840,004 accumulated 24 Bitcoins and fees valued at over $1.5 million. So Bitcoin fees soar to more than 2,750 Satoshis per virtual byte or over $240 per transfer on Friday, April 19, 2024 in the aftermath of the halving. Currently, fees have decreased to 1,700 SAT slash VB or more than $150 per transfer on the low priority in metrics indicate a strong level of room protocol activity on the web portal mempool dot space. I was going to say the last dot, but that's a period. <laughs> As of 830, 839 p.m. Eastern time, 
There are 234,162 unconfirmed transactions awaiting confirmation, equivalent to 241 blocks or more than 450 megabytes of data. High priority fees stand at $245 to $203 per transfer, while low priority fees are roughly $169, $159 per transaction. Within a few, uh, just a few blocks, miners have collected more in fees than they typically do in 24 hours. Fortunate miners include, include via BTC, Foundry, Brains Pool, and Ant Pool, which has found, found two blocks. All right, so now that you have that information, what are you going to do with it? I know what I'm going to do with it. So until next time, everybody, let's get to the money.